Hello everyone and welcome again to Nuddle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. My name is Sava and today we are embarking on an ambitious journey to apply five different distributions to the estimation of parametric value at risk. We have covered a lot of various distributions, their cumulative distribution functions, even briefly their probability density functions, how to estimate their parameters, how to fit those theoretical distributions onto empirical data, for example, empirical distribution functions of stock returns, how to apply those distributions to model these stock returns and how to figure out whether they actually do fit decently or whether the fit is really bad. So, in other terms, which distribution does really fit the data the best? But what is the practical purpose of all these sometimes really hard mathematical tasks? Well, one of the easiest applications of distributions to practical finance calculations or considerations is actually value at risk. We have uh, discussed how to apply parametric value at risk. So when you assume that your portfolio returns follow a particular distribution and uh, investigated it mostly using the normality assumption. But as we have discussed extensively in the previous videos, the normality assumption is most often violated. So if you want to apply parametric value at risk, for example, variance, covariance, or it is known by many names, actually, you might need to actually consider another distribution rather than normal. So today we are applying five distinct distributions, four of them non-normal, featuring various degree of heavy or fat tails, to calculating value at risk for various thresholds. To do that, mathematically, we first need to derive the so-called quantile function for each of those distribution functions. So we start with the cumulative distribution function in each of those four cases. And those distribution functions might seem familiar to you because, well, we used to discuss them in a lot of detail when we were studying logistic, hypersecond, Laplace and Cauchy distribution respectively. But what we need today is we need to calculate or derive the inverse function. Um, as the cumulative distribution function gives us the probability that a certain value of x will not be exceeded by a random variable drawn from that distribution, for value at risk purposes we need to know the inverse. We need to know, given a particular threshold, what is the loss that we will achieve in the n percent of worst case scenarios. So here we've got the functional relationship where x is our independent variable and f of x is our dependent variable, but we need the inverse. We need to derive the function where we express x, so our return in that case, in terms of f of x. So in our case, probability, or in terms of VR, the percentage of worst case scenarios. So in each of those um, cases, in each of those four distribution functions, we need to apply some mathematical transformations to derive the inverse function. So let's start with the logistic distribution. So f of x is equal to the ratio between 1 and 1 plus the exponent of minus x minus mu, which is the location parameter, divided by a, which is the scale parameter that can be estimated using the method of moments from sample variance. To extract x from there, we obviously first need to flip the ratio. So uh, basically 1 divided by f of x would be equal to 1 plus the exponent. Then subtracting 1 from both sides, we get that the exponent of this expression containing x is equal to 1 over f of x minus 1. Then we can plug this x into this ratio and uh, given the common denominator is f of x, we can say that the exponent of this uh, x containing expression again is equal to 1 minus f of x over f of x. Then if we flip the ratio, we can get rid of the minus over here because that's one of the property of powers. And we get a very familiar expression on the left hand side that is basically the odds ratio. 
probability divided by one minus probability is commonly known by an alternative term odds ratio. And now we've just got the exponent of some scaled x on the right hand side. So we can just take the natural logarithm of both sides to get rid of it. And we can do it as this is actually positive for, for all uh, f of x values that are greater than zero and smaller than one. So the logarithm of the odds ratio is equal to x minus mu location parameter divided by a the scale parameter. So from there, we can easily find that x is equal to mu plus a times the natural logarithm of the odds ratio. And that's the uh, quantile function that we will use for the logistic distribution in our value risk calculations. For the hypersecond distribution, it's a little bit harder because we've got two functions imposed on top of each other. So the cumulative distribution function of x is equal to 2 over pi times the arctangent of the exponent of pi over 2 times scaled x using the sample mean and standard deviation. So first we need to multiply both sides by pi over 2, so getting rid of this 2 over pi weird factor in front of the arctangent function. Then as the tangent of the arctangent is just equal to the argument of the arctangent function, we can use this property. We can take the tangent of both sides because uh, both sides allow it. And we see that the tangent of pi over 2 times the uh, cumulative uh, distribution function, so our value at risk threshold in that case, is equal to the exponent of scaled x. We are happy to see that because that's just the exponent, so we can take natural logarithm of both sides and get uh, just pi over 2 times scaled x. And uh, doing some uh, ordinary arithmetic manipulation, so multiplying both sides by uh, two standard deviations and dividing it by pi and then adding mu, we get that x is equal to mu plus two standard deviations divided by pi times the logarithm of the tangent of pi over two times the cumulative distribution function. And that is our quantile function. Looks kind of bulky, but actually if you entangle it step by step, it is really intuitive and easy to understand. Now for the Laplace distribution function, it is actually a little bit interesting because the Laplace function is achieved by gluing two exponent functions together, one for values of x that are lower than the sample median, so the location parameter that is actually estimated using the sample median when we do maximum likelihood, and the other uh, bit of this um, distribution function would be applied for the values of x that are larger than the sample median. And uh, here we need to understand for which purposes do we need the quantile function, actually. We need the quantile function for value at risk, so we need it for losses. So we can surely assume that x is less than the sample median because we are um, concerned with uh, the observations that fall well below the 50th percentile, the sample median we are concerned with. At most, the 10% VER which is way, way down the line. So we can just take the lower bit of the cumulative distribution function and start doing our arithmetic manipulations with it. So we can just multiply both sides by two, and that's a very familiar instance where we just got the exponent on the right-hand side. So now we just need to take the natural logarithm of both sides, and we still can do it because this is greater than zero for all values of the uh, cumulative distribution functions that are greater than zero. So we, ha we have that the natural logarithm of two cumulative distribution functions is equal to scaled x using the sample median, the location parameter, and b, the scaled parameter. So again, multiplying by b and adding mu to both sides, we get the quantile function that x is equal to mu plus b times the natural logarithm of two cumulative distribution functions. And that can be applied for all values of f of x that do not exceed one half. So we can use it for any estimation of value at risk over all potential confidence intervals that are used in VR calculations. And finally, let's consider the Cauchy distribution function that is calculated using an, the arctangent function. So first of all, let's subtract one half from both sides and then multiply it by pi. 
So we isolate the arctangent on the right hand side and we get some expression involving the cumulative distribution function value on the left hand side. So then we can use the same trick that we did for hypersecond and take the tangent of both sides and we can by all means do that and the tangent of the arctangent is equal to the argument by definition. So then we can again isolate the x, um, the scaled x on the right hand side that is the location and scale parameter that we estimated using the maximum likelihood method in one of the recent videos. So then multiplying both sides by gamma and adding mu, we get the quantile function for the Cauchy distribution that x is equal to mu plus gamma times the tangent of pi times the cumulative distribution function minus pi over 2. So now having all that in mind, we can estimate our parametric VAR for the normal distribution by just using the norm.inv function, the inverse normal distribution, for the probability that is equal to our confidence interval, our VR threshold, and uh, we'll take our location and scale parameters that in that case are just equal to the sample mean and standard deviation, and apply it for all the confidence intervals of interest and get very familiar values. Now let's apply the logistic distribution for the value at risk and we need to use the logistic quantile function for that and having that in mind we need to use mu and a parameters that are the location scale parameters for the logistic distribution and then figure out the natural logarithm of the odds ratio for a certain value of the confidence interval. So having that in mind what we can do is we can First of all, take the location parameter, mu and log the row here, add the scale parameter a and log the row here as well, and then multiply it by the natural logarithm of the odds ratio. And the odds ratio is going to be the value of the cumulative distribution function or the confidence interval. Those are equivalent in that case. And divided by 1 minus the value of the cumulative distribution function. And that's it for the logistic distribution quantile function. And we see that the value at risk for low confidence intervals, so on the left hand side, on the left tail, are quite a bit, while not significantly, but quite a bit um, higher. So the losses, the magnitude of losses are higher than for the normal distribution, but for the higher values of the confidence interval, so for not that extreme uh, cases, we have that the normal distribution value at risk is predicting higher losses than the logistic distribution does. That can be explained in terms of courtesies and fatness of tails. As we all remember, the courtesies of the logistic distribution is equal to 6 over 5, so 1.2. So the tails of the logistic distribution are a little bit fatter than the tails of the normal distribution, so most of the losses will be generated somewhere where the deviation from the mean is more extreme. And we see that this pattern becomes more and more pronounced as we move from the lower courtesies distributions, such as the normal distribution with the excess courtesies of 0, to the logistic distribution with the excess courtesies of 1.2, to the hypersecond distribution with the excess courtesies of 2, to the Laplace distribution with the excess courtesies of 3, and finally, and with the Cauchy distribution where the excess courtesies is actually undefined. And... Uh, mean is infinite and everything up from mean is undefined. So a very, very badly behaving distribution function in terms of its statistical moments at least. So then let's estimate the values at risk for the hypersecond distribution. And for that, we need to look at its quantile function. So we need to remember all of these multiplies here. So first of all, we need to, again, start with the location parameter, which in that case is just the sample mean location and scale for the hypersecond distribution are just equal to sample mean and standard deviation. That is what is handy when you estimate something using the hypersecond distribution. You don't need to worry about any parameter estimation per se. Then we need to add two times the scale parameter, so sample standard deviation and lock the row here, divided by pi and then multiplied by the natural logarithm of the tangent of pi over 2 times the confidence interval or the value of the cumulative distribution function. Then we need to close the parentheses for the tangent, then we close the parentheses for the natural logarithm, and then we're ready to enforce the formula and bottom right click it all the way down. And we see that for the hypersecond distribution, the 
values of the losses for low confidence intervals are even higher than for the logistic distribution, while the values for high confidence intervals become um, higher in terms of value and low in terms of magnitude as the higher the curtises, the more losses are concentrated in the extreme deviations from the mean, so on the very left-hand side of your tails that are the fatter, the higher is the value of the curtises. And again, to remind you, the value of the excess curtises for the hypersecond distribution is 2, which is higher than both the logistic distribution and, of course, higher than the normal distribution. Moving on to the Laplace distribution, we need to apply this quantile function that looks really nice, especially compared to the hypersecond quantile function. So what we can do is we can just start with the location parameter, which is the sample median in that case, and we lock the row, plus the scale parameter b, which is the average absolute deviation, as we know per the maximum likelihood procedure that has a closed form solution and is nicely derived in the case of the Laplace distribution. And we need to multiply it by the natural logarithm of 2 times the confidence interval or value at risk. And we enforce the formula, bottom right click it all the way down, and see that the same pattern is generally reinforced throughout our confidence intervals. And I would just want to remind you that this quantile function is applicable for the Laplace distribution only if your threshold, your value at risk, is less than 50%. But in practical scenarios, that's always what happens. So we can just care of one of the components of the Laplace distribution, just one of the exponents that are being glued together to construct the cumulative distribution function graph for Laplace. And finally, finishing it off with Cauchy, we just need to start with the location parameter that we estimated using maximum likelihood in one of the previous videos, add the scale parameter, again estimated using maximum likelihood, and multiply it by the tangent function of pi times the valid risk threshold minus pi over half. And wow, we see that our loss in the 0.25% worst case scenario, as predicted by the Cauchy distribution, is equal to minus 45.35%. And the difference is so large for almost all of the low confidence intervals. Even for the 2.5% confidence interval, which is not that low, our loss as per the Cauchy distribution will be standing at minus 4.5% almost which is extremely high for such a high confidence interval. So why the Cauchy distribution is such an odd one out if we consider that all of those give different and uh, predictably different in terms of courtesies, but still comparable results, while the Cauchy distribution is deviating so significantly from all of the other distributions? Well, the answer is that the Cauchy distribution has extremely heavy tails extremely fat tails, and uh, some of its moments, particularly moments that are higher than two, are undefined. So it will have extremely high in magnitude losses, even for relatively modest confidence intervals, relatively modest cutoff points. So that's why the distributional assumption is extremely important when you apply parametric VAR. It's very unlikely that some portfolio of yours would have a Cauchy distribution, so you can relatively safely omit that possibility, but even if you are talking about differences among those four more well-behaved distributions, if you are managing or risking millions of dollars, then the relatively small differences between these losses can become material for your clients. And that's why assuming the correct distribution is extremely important. And that's all there is for quantile functions and estimating parametric value at risk using five distributions. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, please leave your suggestions on any further topics on business economics or finance you want to see future videos on. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.